Orange County Clerk's Office. Um, hello, I'm trying to reach Sarah Arnold. She is on the phone right now. I'm sorry? She's on the phone right now. All right, um, do you mind if I hold? Um, I'm trying to reach her in her capacity as the president of the Association of Clerks of Circuit Courts of Indiana. Um, I was told basically to call her by another member. Okay, yeah. Hang on just a minute. I don't think she's going to be that much longer, okay? All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. County Clerk's office. <laughs> um, yes, hello. I'm trying to reach uh, Sarah Arnold. Yes, she's still on the phone. All right. Do you want me to take your name and number, or do you want to hold? Um, do you know, I mean, I, I can just hold. It's fine. Okay. Hang on just a second.
afternoon. This is Sarah. Hello, Miss Arnold. Good afternoon. Yes. Um, I am told that as the president of the Association of the Clerks of Circuit Courts of Indiana, sorry, that's a mouthful. I'm told as the that president. Is, it is. It's a, a very cumbersome title. I'm told as president of the A-triple-C-I-N-D that you can possibly answer a question that I have. Well, I will certainly try. I, I will. All right. Um, I would like to know who is responsible for administering discipline to a clerk of court, if anyone at all. I don't know. I can honestly say I've never had that situation, thankfully. Um, well, good job. <laughs> um, however, at in at this juncture, it would appear that there is no disciplinary process at all. So um, it, it's it's that is some very those are very easy to obtain statistics at this point in time, and that's sort of where I'm going with this. Is I am curious. I I, I originally started looking into. Um, I wanted to know you know, essentially what the numbers would be um, county by county, um, similar to the way I could look up different complaints that have been filed against a, um, an attorney. Um, uh -huh. And in my research, I found that there doesn't seem to be any sort of, um, I've, I've spoken with the Indiana Supreme Court Clerk's Office, I've spoken with the Indiana Office for Court, I don't know, the Court Services, um, they, you know, everybody seems to um, have the same answer. That's a good question, or I don't know. Um, and I, long story short, uh, you're sort of the end of the line. Um, I, I've been referred to this organization. I spoke with a Michelle Hetrick earlier. Um, she gave me your contact information. I was only able to figure out how to contact you guys from the uh, sponsorship application, which is... Okay. I guess where my next question would be, because it wouldn't it wouldn't appear that you guys are a governmental agency. You seem to be a, a private organization. Um, you have yeah. sponsorship from the various people that you know would and companies right. that would make money off of the clerk's office. Um, but but it doesn't seem to be um, anything in the bylaws that you guys have um, in regards to a disciplinary I don't think process. We have any kind of authority to? <laughs> I I don't think you do either, and that's sort right. of kind of what I'm trying to figure out is. In totality, it looks like due process, which is an you know an American right kind of thing. This big fundamental yeah. thing, Constitution and oath and all these words get thrown around. But um, the actual administration of due process oftentimes happens in the clerk's office, and if the clerk is not unbiased, well, that could go real south real quick um, for an individual such as a pro se litigant or something like that nature. Um, yeah. Now, it's to my understanding that as a constitutional position, this seems to be the only constitutional position that isn't actually held to the Constitution. Um, yeah, so... Well, I, I don't... I mean, what makes you say, say that, that there's nothing... I, I, I find that hard to um, believe, I guess, uh, that, there, that the, we aren't held to any constitutional responsibilities? I mean, what you're saying? not enforceable ones, it would seem. I mean, I, I think it, it would appear to me that this is based upon faith. Um, we, we trust you to do the right thing, but we really can't force you. Uh-huh. Um, really? I mean, yeah, and I, I say this as um, essentially like a voter because you're a constitutionally elected position, much like the yeah. coroner and the sheriff and everybody else who has a disciplinary process, such as, right. you know, like the circuit court judge who's held to the Indiana Code of Judicial Conduct. Um, there's a there's a, a process, you know, for a complaint procedure there. Um, and I'm just sort of curious what exactly the, the clerk's office complaint procedure would be. And, I mean, over and over, I, it's sort of been confirmed that there isn't one outside of Indiana Code 5 dash 8 dash 1 dash 35. 5 dash 8 dash okay. 1 dash 35, which states that when an accusation in writing verified by the oath of any person, that's me, 
-huh. is presented to a circuit court, superior court, or probate court, alleging that any officer within the jurisdiction of the court has been guilty of, one, charging and collecting illegal fees for services rendered or to be rendered in the officer's office, two, refusing or neglecting to perform the official duties pertaining to the officer's office. Now, do you know if the clerk's office is actually within the jurisdiction of the court? Because it seems that everything in the Indiana Code regarding a clerk of court comes from the Indiana Code and the Indiana Constitution. But from what I'm being told here, neither one of those things actually apply to the clerk's office. Yeah, I should say that the court and, and the clerk are separate. Yeah. Well, see, sometimes a clerk may forget that she's separate from the court. And then that's... Okay. That's where a complaint process would be handy. Okay. Um, huh. Now, what I read this as is that I can pretty much, as a pro se litigant, walk right in here and um, an accusation in writing verified by the oath of any person present it to the circuit court um, alleging that the individual is guilty of refusing or neglecting to perform the official duties pertaining. It seems pretty simple to me that I can just walk right in here and accuse her on paper in writing and the circuit court judge would hear that yeah within five to ten days instead wow. of hearing within 20. Hmm. now i'm sure there have i i know there was a um a, a judge in blackford county that uh, filed some paperwork against his clerk, uh, Dorinda, her name, that's when I first came into office. Blackford County. Do you know what Blackford. year you came into office? Yeah, yeah, which was, I came into office in 2016. All right, I might be able to find it with the year and the county. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good with research. <laughs> The judge is the one that got disciplined for his actions. Oh, my. That's very yeah. strange. I mean, the judge, yeah, the judge didn't like this clerk, and um, he actually barred her from coming to work. With, a like, a, a court order? Yeah. Huh. So what? Ha how does a judge order the clerk of court to do all sorts of stuff any other time? You know, like when they send me court orders and it says yeah. the judge orders such and such on such and such date and the clerk of yeah. court is hereby directed to do right. such and such. How does a judge order a clerk of court to do something if he can't actually order? Shouldn't he write the words like pretty please with the cherry on top? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know what it said, but I, I, I remember I was a new clerk and I came in. And uh, I happened to sit by her at a conference, my first conference or something, and I mean, I just, I got an earful. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, okay. I, I believe it was Blackford County. So, uh, all right, I guess my next question would be, are you guys qualified under, or do you have qualified immunity? Or is this a private civil matter? I, I don't know that either. I because it would seem that I'm not a lawyer or anything, but my right, okay. my right to publicity is protected, and so is my identifying information. So if a clerk, let's say they were utilizing my identifying information and my right to publicity to fraudulently gain a profit utilizing the courts, would this be a commercial matter? Have you talked to an attorney? Oh, no. I need an attorney about as much as I need a hole in the head. Okay. <laughs> they, uh, they fully, I think they fully count on me as a pro se litigant getting caught up in this, uh, this mess that is the clerk's office being unaccountable. You see, I can file yeah. some paperwork and it can apparently literally sit on the clerk's office desk for months at a time. And there's nothing that I can do about it. And that seems have very you, strange to me. To, uh, have you talked to Jeff uh, Berkowitz in the uh, court uh, judicial administration office? 
Um, I mean, I suppose I will call them next. Well, let me, um, let me but when I spoke okay. with the, the clerk of courts for the Indiana Supreme Court's office, they I asked them if I should call the Judicial Administration Office or the Office for I, Court I Services. That would be my next step. But um, I, I suppose I'll give it a whirl. Um, this is getting to be quite interesting, so, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, well, well I'll, I would, I'll be intrigued to know what you come up with. Or if there's going to be some kind of, uh, because I know the judicial, uh, as president, we sit on the uh, Judicial Administration Committee. There is a committee. Yeah, you also sit on, like, the Public Records Commission, ex, uh, ex officio. Right, the and a, order, the um, order. You guys are responsible for making sure that, you know, good old American democracy thrives with the whole election process. It seems uh -huh. very strange to me that all the important parts of an American democracy are somehow applied by the clerk's office who seems to be just able to do whatever they want. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know that that's true. Though. Well, I mean, I don't do what I want because there's a, a process where I can be disciplined. And I mean, yeah. humans, you know, we're not the most moral of species. So the reason that we have so many rules and procedures for administering discipline to each other, you know, in order to self-police each other is because we recognize this about human nature. Um, for, for whatever reason, I guess the legislator forgot, you know, one of the main components of all, you know, the justice system pretty much hinges upon the clerk's office functioning, you know, correctly and, you know, without bias. So uh -huh. it's, it's honestly, as a citizen living in America, I'm confused what exactly other countries are jealous of at this point with, with our justice system. Um, it doesn't seem very humane at all because there's no due process um, to, to challenge, you know, one of the most fundamental components of the actual administration of justice. So yeah, well, uh, I will I, I will call the next person. Um, thank you. Um, yes. OK. Well, uh, good luck. And I, I, I'm, I'm sure there's a process somewhere. Um, I mean, I would. In my opinion, I think somebody overlooked the fact that there was literally one way to do this, and that was the citizen can directly accuse the clerk, according yeah. to this Indiana code. Um, okay. I, I think it's personally this easy. But I just wanted to do some, you know, some research. Okay. And I'm not a professional or anything. I didn't go to law school. So, I, I, you know, I leave it up to the experts um, and... I mean, if nobody knows of any other way to do this than the one that I found, I presume that I'm correct. And I am, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I, well, I'd be curious to see what you find out. If you do find out something concrete, uh, would you please let me know? Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm, um, I'm something of a citizen journalist, so, um, I intend to contact all of your offices and, and keep you guys updated because I, I find it quite astounding that I seem to have the, um, the, the key to the lock, so to speak, and nobody else seems to even knew that it existed. Um, yeah. or, or I'm sort of correct, and, and it, it's really this easy to hold you guys accountable. And, I mean, if I worked in the clerk's office and was doing a bunch of crazy nonsense that should get me removed from office. I probably wouldn't tell anybody about this either. Um, well, yeah, well, I, I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of us are not uh, doing crazy and stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I, maybe there has been no, I mean, I know there's been a clerk in Washington County that, well, she got picked up for drugs, <laughs> but, you know. Um, well, uh, tack on Laporte County and Porter County out of the 92 counties. That's gonna, that's gonna probably bump it up to about 10 percent are are engaged in misconduct just within this conversation. So really, yeah. Oh. Um, well. Okay. Funny how that works out. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, um, I thank you as 
president of this uh are, are what are you guys are you guys like a 501c3 are you just a private club um a union no we're not a union let me we do file tax returns um let me see what's on the top of that if i still have. so are you I a for-profit a... company yes yeah. you're for yeah. all right so that that makes complete sense with the um Dossett Consulting, Eagle Accounts, the Indiana Stamp, RBM Voting, all yeah. these. Right. Um, is there any other, um, anybody else that would stand to make a profit off of this? Any, any other sponsors or? Uh... Oh, we have a, a, a list of them. Um... Oh, oh, okay. Wow, well, yeah, I imagine. There's a lot of money to be made in this, especially with the. Uh... The 4D the vote, office. The, the, vote, the voting machines and all that kind of stuff, too. Right, right. Electronic voting. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, remember, you know, I mentioned Porter County Clerk's Office. Uh-huh. Yeah, so. Um, imagine if the people that voted for the clerk could actually hold her accountable for her election responsibilities while she was clerk. Wouldn't that be crazy? Oh, my God. Well, we are, we are, that we, uh, we get warned, uh, uh, cautioned on that, uh, caution. Yeah, a, <laughs> That's a funny word. Caution well, is something I, I, I do with my child. That, that is nowhere near being able to file a document against you where you, uh, have some sort of disciplinary process administered to you incrementally until you lose your office. Um, where it's, uh, you get elected, it's four years, I guess, until you're, uh, convicted of a crime or something. Mm. Does anybody even have jurisdiction to arrest you guys? I would, yeah. I mean, like I said, that clerk uh, that got picked up for drugs, the state police picked her up. The state police? But, I, I, but as far as if it's misconduct, I, I don't know. S I would say so, yes. State police. That sounds like state jurisdiction. That's weird. I, I mean, I, I guess our county, I don't know. I, I don't know. So... Okay, um, you have a public official bond, correct? Correct. Um, if you don't mind me asking, is I mean, I can find it out. It's public record. But um, is it an individual bond, or do you have a blanket bond for the office, like through like the county commissioner's ordinance or something? And mine is an individual. Okay, and is that payable to the state of Indiana? Uh, no, it's payable to the insurance company. Okay, and the insurance pays it to who? What do you mean? I, I'm sorry, the premium I pay is to the insurance company. Oh, you mean if something Who happens? do you, yeah, who do you pay? I, I, I don't know. I never Because, I mean, the, the purpose of a bond is to hold you accountable to the oath. They kind of go hand in hand. Um, I would say the this, this state because it's usually for um, missing funds or something like that. So, a county clerk violates a normal citizen's rights and if they file against their bond the state would make money off of it is that about right i don't know that i i, I don't know i probably need to be quiet <laughs> and not speak of things i do not know uh, so what is the point of your association to max so is it it seems to max we, uh, to lobby. maximize profit no no we, uh, we lobby, uh, we plan our conferences, we plan training sessions, that kind of thing. Do you know who would be responsible for training the clerks? Well, yes, uh, State Board of Accounts. Are Is there anyone else? Uh, well, uh, when we have our conference, we have the, the judicial administration people come in. Okay. Uh, we have the election division people come in. I presume that you, you require, you, you obtain training because you're required to, right? Uh, yes. Like educational credits or whatever? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what happens if you're not up to date on those? I, uh, we've had that conversation before. I don't know. I, I'm not sure what the words, I don't think there's any penalty. It just says you should get training hours. Um, are there any, like, requisites for qualification, or is it just the basic constitutional stuff? I have to, I have to be a, a resident of the county for a year, 
Um, right. Okay. No, there's no special requirements. So the only, office, the only office that has that is the assessor's office. Hmm. Well, I, man, I always thought this would be a great job because I love like office work. I got the weirdest hobby. I'm very into researching and statistics and line items and all financial records, all sorts of fun stuff. And I had honestly thought about running against my local clerk. Um, okay. But, you know, there would be some things that would eliminate me. But, I mean, <laughs> hell, I don't know if anybody would even care. So, no. thank you. Um, all right. I have a rejuvenated hope to maybe run for this elected office myself. I mean, I'm a multiple felon, but psh, it's not like that even matters, right? Well, now, you know, there is, uh, we do have to check that on when, when you sign up to, um, to be a candidate. What happens if you don't? I mean, realistically, it's almost like I could just go pay the clerk to put me on the ballot. And, no. and I mean, it doesn't seem that anybody could do anything about me paying her or her taking the money. Oh. Yeah, there's no. a lot of theoretical implications with a lack of a disciplinary process. It's, it circles right back to the need for one. Anyway, um, thank you very much. This conversation was very enlightening. Um, okay. I will let you know what I find out. But right now, I mean, it looks well, like can I, you can, can start. I your name? Can yeah. I your name? Yeah, no problem. My name is Christopher A. Throgmorton. T-H-R-O-G-M-O-R-T-O-N. Okay. Um, and where, where are you from? I am originally from Kokomo, Indiana, but I've resided for quite some time now that I'm um, pretty much a permanent resident of LaPorte County. I live in LaPorte, okay. Indiana. Uh-huh. Um, okay. And I mean, yeah, yeah. This is very, very interesting stuff. I was certain, I mean, I had to be wrong. Um but it, it would it would seem that I am correct that there is one process and that is that the clerk answers directly to the people because she apparently is the only elected official who does answer directly to the people. Well, I, I quite fascinating. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, talk to the ju judicial administration and uh, maybe they can uh, say no. You're not right. There is a procedure, if need be. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Have All a right. good one. Bye. You too.